out, Martin. Yeah. Yeah, today's topics. <laughs> Operation Red Alert Norway. Artists and Vag Knitting versus Slagmore. Helvetta Documentary Review. And Avatar Hunter Gathering. Boom, 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 boom. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the noises you make for it. Exactly, man. I was um, thinking... I should this be a is, sound editor or something. The, 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 yeah, exactly. Um, this is doom and gloom as we know it. But, <laughs> um, yeah, how's things been going in the department of the arts uh, and theatre? Well, seems like it's uh, going pretty shitty. Or, um, yeah... Uh, when it comes to this operation, right? I, actually, I haven't seen any of these uh, is buildings. You haven't with the, red, with the red colors, unfortunately. No. Well. Have you? No. Yeah, uh, no, you don't. Don't really come to Oslo these days, do you? No, I, I can't though. Everything's uh, on lockdown, and then I got to work and uh -huh. all of this stuff, and then the buses are a strike. Yeah, but it's over now. Yeah. So you short should, be, should be possible at least, but uh, I don't. I'm I'm not sure that this whole red uh, operation red thing is still going on. Is it? No, it's not. This no. is the problem. Was it? Was it just one night or a few nights maybe? Or uh... it was just one night. It was just so one night. Oh, okay. I'm I'm gonna explain it. Oh, Her okay. Go ahead. Bagedi. Operaren rö. Kulturarbeidere fage i kveld flere kultur big rund om i landet rö i protest mot at regering no kutte kompensjonens områden. Well, even though it's like Bjorvika, I haven't been to Bjorvika since, uh, for a very long time, you know, mm -hmm. they even did the National Theatre Red. Yeah. Um, and apparently this is to say that the, there's not going to be that much money spent on the culture and arts, which I find quite eerie. Yeah. So it was Red Alert Norge, and it says Red Alert Norge, we make events. So it's inspired of all the like light technicians and the buildings, and they all did like a, a protest on the 30th of September. And personally, I don't think it's enough to highlight the sensation of the problem. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, well, it's, it's a difficult question, isn't it? I mean, um, this, this phenomenon is, is pretty much the same uh, around the entire planet now these days. I mean, uh, I think most countries that take the virus seriously they they do have a limited um like cultural life let's put it this way so um like what can you do or well, how much how much how much money can you use to uh, you know compensate uh, artists and people working in the entertainment sector to be honest with you, I don't think it just covers the entertainment section, even though in Oslo you have, you know, Telenor Arena, National Theatre, uh, the Norsk Theatre, mm -hmm. and you have the ballet and Holman Collin, you've got so many. Well, the, there was, I think Blitz did this uh, red thing too, so they didn't even name it. Exactly. 
I yeah, named it's, Trondheim. It's... I've never been to Trondheim. You've but... never been to Trondheim? No. Have you? It's a really cool place. Yeah, I've been there twice now. So, do you know Olaf's uh, Holland? Olaf's Holland? Uh, 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 no, I, I, no. I mean, the first thing and I know, it's a fortress. Uh, Nidarosdomen is uh, the well-known, you know, the, the, the cathedral on the Mayhem uh, tower for the mysteries from Satanas. Ah. And um, uh, do I know more? No, actually the rest I don't know. This is the very, very interesting part about it because we're talking about culture, we're talking about how music is influenced. Um, and throughout this whole show, we're going to talk about, you know, romanticism of Norway as well, because I can't help it. It's the most interesting topic, you know. Um, you've got other places that did it that strand from Lillehammer, Bergen, um, even Ice Bowl and all kinds of places. They did it, mm -hmm. but we didn't hear anything about it. Yeah, um, well. You know, just to say that the, the cultural workers, most of them are very popular, um, they did this stand and they got involved. And I'm just going to show a couple of photos. They got their sound technicians and all that kind of thing involved. Mm -hmm. and they had opera singers involved and all sorts. So this was a really big thing yeah. for the entertainment industry and uh, stuff like that. But um, this is not my part of my debate. The part of my debate is when you've got theatres and you've got radio stations or clubs or bars or restaurants mm -hmm. that are around museums right they're moving the museums to Bjorvika which is that that part next to Acker's Festning okay and um, and it's like Serengeta and that part that's where they're moving the uh, museum. culture yeah so oh here, they've, they've moved the mu Monk Museum to your Vika. So that's mm -hmm. going to be the cultural place and home of everything. Opera um, and Monk Museum. They're going to hu have a huge library as well. It's, uh, the library is open already. Yeah. Yeah. This one I've got to check out because... Dijkmanska Bibliothek. Yeah. Talking, right? yeah. It's, it's going to be huge, you know, because yeah. obviously famous painting, Scream. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's what captivated me as a teenager as well to Norway, you know? Uh -huh. um, I remember being in art history class and oh, really? going over it. Yeah. We didn't talk about this at all at art history. It's so so weird. Like Edvard Munch was like, um, yeah, we, we we hardly discussed him at all. I think. Well, so I, I just I just caught up on him when I moved out here because you know like you? if you live here then you you sort of have to be aware of his works. Absolutely, and I find this very very interesting that we would. Um debate this topic because even in the UK um, there were problems and I'm going to show that you know these restaurants and bars are all shutting down because they're known no longer have the museums to back them up oh okay so that kind of thing uh -huh. so it does affect other parts of 
um, the status of leisure and tourism industry if mm -hmm. you have everything in one location. And also, I have to ask you, have you noticed yeah. if anybody's moved away from Oslo? Like, um, what, what, what do you mean? Like who or what? Yeah, because most of the people who are interested in theater and things like that generally yeah. aren't going to live in the center of Oslo because it's so expensive. Yep. So maybe that's having a central part of what we're seeing, Operation Red, you know? Well, I don't know, I wouldn't go this far. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Operation Red, I think it's strictly about the, the virus situation. Now the, uh, the fact that they're moving like you know like they're trying to make this um barcode area of oslo to be a more more of a cultural center like now uh, the opera house is there uh, the the library as you mentioned and uh, the monk museum mm -hmm. well it's um of course it, it probably has some adverse effects on on some of the areas outside the the bark or this biblical area because it's uh yeah like who who will, will go to like uh, the old uh, monk museums uh, area and what's anymore. Gonna like there happen? there was there was nothing there so um so yeah but i think it's well Actually, uh, i can't make gardens a were next to it yeah yeah the botanical gardens are there yeah, yeah. that's true yeah but that's like yeah it's a chill place it's uh it doesn't i don't think it attracts too many tourists though i mean it's more for um for the locals mm -hmm. like you know like if you want to have some a nice walk or something and you live in the center then you might go to the botanical gardens that's it but if you're coming from abroad you're you definitely want to check out some monk uh, monk paintings and uh, now now you're just gonna stay in the center pretty much well uh, i would just like to do debate about how theater and anything in the music industry uh to do with clubs and pubs and anything like that is to do with the middle class um and i don't think that I would primarily focus on anybody else's cultural backgrounds, but I will say if you have like extra income coming in, you can support these kind of cultural things. So I read an article actually in The Guardian um, mm. and it says, power has to be grasped. British theatre is battling its class problem and class is often absent from the discussion about diversity in theatre, but it remains a barrier for audiences, actors and others in the industry. What's the solution? Well, I remember that uh, I come from a very middle class background, I have to say. So mm -hmm. art and music is a, a real focus for me um a real focal point mm -hmm. but in 1979 um in england there was a, a theater maker called john mcgrath who insisted that there is a working class audience for theater in britain which makes demands and which has values which are different from those enshrined in our idealized middle class audience okay so he began to write a book called a good night out and it's very famous uh, but 40 years later uh, it says that the observation is firmly those of acceptability to a mo metropolitan middle class audience um, and I I would just like to say that uh, 
it is a bit of a pain because you want to be able to support live bands, live music, theatre, art, all of these kind of things. But at the same time, if there's no funding there, it's going to become a pro problem, you know? So yeah. um, just to battle it out with what the, the BBC and everyone else says around the situation to do with class, um, I'm going to talk about how, you know, austerity has been a, a drive. I don't know whether, whether or not you know about austerity. Mm -hmm. um, but for the viewers that don't understand austerity, Europe was in a very dark place. We can say that pro, pre-coronavirus, there were problems. Okay, uh, we went through an economic crush and it just made everyone poorer than they were pre austerity, you know. Um, so Greece and Spain were hit hard, and then Portugal. Portugal was hit hard. I, I remember this uh, period very vividly because that was the year I went to Portugal actually for my uh, Erasmus, you know. Uh, I was an exchange student uh, in the middle of this uh, uh, economic crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you notice the class distinction in the, in the places where you were? Well, I mean, I don't think it's any different now, and I don't think it was different before. It's it was just uh, like the labor market was feeling incredibly grim. I think I was okay. I, I didn't try very hard to find a job or something, but I I did look around, and it was it seemed quite uh, impossible. Mm. So this, yeah, that was this that was, was a up. conclusion for everyone you know there were no jobs um and i'm hitting portugal now by the way yeah. <clears throat> because they had a huge bailout um but then it raised uh vat and they had huge tax hikes for like high earners so it wasn't an attractive place to set up a business nope so this is another thing about austerity. It does affect the economy, whether or not there's going to be enough jobs and whether or not we're going to support the leisure and tourism industry, do you know what I mean? Or music mm -hmm. industry. Um, Spain, I remember Spain hit being hit really hard. Yeah. Um, and Europe weren't really... Uh, friendly about it and uh, there were even marches and demonstrations to like protest against austerity measures austerity measures sorry and uh, you know the poorer were getting poorer and all this kind of thing but mm -hmm. I remember for the UK it was huge we had cuts um cuts in so many areas that were unbelievable um re retirement age is now being raised to 67 mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. this is um this is back in 2012 uh where we saw changes and developments being raised about our working lives and so the working class, as we know it, the ones who can afford to pay for all of these lovely luxuries, like restaurants, bars, going to places like the botanical gardens, for example, or museums, going to have a coffee in a museum, going to do all these nice things. The money's not there. Mm -hmm. So... I specifically remember that we did a protest in 2011 and there was 250,000 people that marched, but there were more that marched for 
the protest for Europe, even mm-hmm. though, okay, people were like, oh yeah, Europe, pro Europe, yeah, let's all be a part of Europe. But what, what's going on? It's terrible. Mm-hmm. France now, uh, which is a topic, uh, France is very cultural. It's, it's very uh, French. <laughs> you what know a nice what I mean? statement to make, yeah. What, what a statement. <laughs> <laughs> but um, apparently uh, there was like Hollandaise, uh, well, do you say Hollandais, wanted to raise um, the minimum wage and hire 60,000 more teachers and lower retirement age from 62 to 60 for the workers. Now, they're having like a pension riot now as we speak in France. It's never going to stop. It's not anything to do with coronavirus. It's just Macron. And... Germany itself has had problems. So this just affects everything to do with austerity and things like that. So I'm going to show that um, it also affects pubs, which I really wanted to back this idea of uh, supporting... uh, theater music and everything else like that with operation let red yeah but like when uh what's the date for this article so the date for this article is 2018 so they were doing a reflection Um, okay well it would be interesting to see a figure now i think you know this year only Mm -hmm. i think it's a significant percentage of uh, pubs that might have been closed uh, not only in the UK, but uh, everywhere else too, I suppose. I mean, pre-virus. Uh, pre-virus, like it's uh, like we're talking these historical terms, like Absolutely. the pre-virus era. It's so ridiculous, isn't it? Like this it is year, ridiculous. it's yeah, and like now we have to talk like the before the virus or in the corona times you know like uh, it just feels like i don't know like so absurd it does it does yeah well whatever this is this is what we're living anyhow i'm definitely gonna talk about this uh article because Uh, it does it it does affect you know whether or not we are going through european problems you know so more than 25% of the UK pubs have closed since 2001. And it's small venues and pubs near major cities among most likely to have gone. And I'm just going to show you some <laughs> grim pictures. Oh, uh, the is <laughs> you know, the ship. I mean, the ship honest, went down apparently. The ship went down, it's <laughs> gone. Abandoned ship. Did you know this place or? No, absolutely not. Oh. And I'm not really <laughs> from Greater Manchester, but I have been to Bolton and I have been to Manchester. And I will say that um, during the time of um, indie music, I was a fan and uh-huh. I went to uh, a club called rock world and uh it was really good it had three or four floors with music in it so you Mm -hmm. had the metal rock the new age then you also had the brit pop then you had the industrial you know metal Mm -hmm. you know where people wore the stuff that we wear now every day the masks and everything with the bobos Uh, (laughs) shoes (laughs) that's a a great scene i always admire the these people but i never could actually get to like the music so weird yeah um at the uh, the same time if you were to ask me like what are my favorite bands i think like 70 percent would be like somewhat industrial but not this 
like I don't know, like like the whatever the, this crowd is normally listening to. It's just so strange. Yeah, it's like the Nine Inch Nails, the yeah. Fear Factory. But um, like that—that's the thing. Like Nine Inch Nails and Fear Factory, like both are considered to be industrial, but they are like super different. I mean, absolutely. You know, like Fear Factory is fucking heavy. It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, Nine Inch Nails, like whatever. And then like you have Rammstein as well, and then Ministry. Uh, Ministry. Like, yeah, Rammstein. Like, all of these are industrial, but like they have, I don't know, like very little in common. I think it's just like some feeling, but but um, these these bands don't attract these uh, the guys in the masks and all the weird shit. You know, we're talking about here. I mean, yeah, we're, we're painting. I've never seen I've never seen any weird looking people on Fear Factory or Ministry concerts or yeah. Ramstein for that matter. Uh, or Ramstein, yeah, good point. And uh, I wouldn't have classified Ramstein as this uh, modern tech band, but they are. Yeah. And, you know, back in the day, everybody experimented. And I had, I told you about Teenage Atari Riot, right? Atari Teenage Riot, yeah. At Atari Teenage Riot, sorry. Yeah. Um, I had their album uh, back in 1998. And... Mm -hmm. I was into industrial metal, mm -hmm. so I had Fear Factory as well. Uh, can't, can't, uh, can't tell you why. Have I you, just know that I liked have, it. Have you read the development in Fear Factory now? No, I haven't. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big story though, because uh, Burton C. Rather, the singer, left the band now. Mm. It's, uh, it's really fucked up. Ooh. Like, you know, it's uh, I, I don't know if you know the story of Fear Factory in general, but like they started out mm -hmm. four people together. Then, uh, you know, the the funding guitar player Dino he he left the band. I think there was some personal conflict, and then they went on without him. They did two albums, and then he came back and he fired the bass player and the the drummer. Bloody hell. And like he was doing it like so so from the original lineup it was just him and Burton mm -hmm. and then they made I think three albums now and now uh, they had a, s a few years of uh, legal battle with the with the former members and now it, it appears that Dino won the battle but uh, sometimes I think uh, okay like there's nothing to confirm this statement but I think he schemed out uh, Burton from some money or something that's that's the only thing I can think of at this point that is some gruesome kind of challenge because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know back in 2017 they were in oslo yeah yeah, yeah. were you there yeah they were there yeah, oh yeah shit we met there i think then yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. but oh. you, you know just 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 saying that um and these developments that have happened with even bands and uh, stuff, it, it's a build up. It, we, even bands went through uh, austerity. But going back to what Erna Solberg. Uh, sorry, sorry about the, you know, yeah. this uh, digression. It, no, no, it's good because we, we've got good debate, good flow going. But going back <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> What Anna Solberg is saying um, about having open um, arrangements, open air arrangements of 200 people. Now, I hope this continues for 2020 because I'm going to... Wait, what? Yeah, what she wants we? us to have like arrangements of 200 people. Um, but the, I think this this must be an um, older uh, yeah. piece of news. Now I heard that uh, how did it work actually? If it's not a designated place for for concerts and cultural events, then it's fifty fifty people maximum. I think. Okay. And um, well, I have to say I'm I'm quite confused about what's going on now because yeah. you know you know Odium was going to play in Rockin mm -hmm. uh, next month and they canceled that gig. Jeez. 
and uh, they cancelled the uh, gods weird as well that was supposed to play in Rockefeller. Yeah, and this now, one I've heard about. Yeah. Weird. Um, now I'm wondering. I I had tickets for thirteen forty nine, and I'm wondering what's gonna happen to the, to that one. Um. I I won't get your hopes up too high about all. No. The, uh, no, all the no. Stuff, I, I think you know? I think everything will be cancelled. I think so. But at the same time, at the same time, there's a Golden Core playing concerts uh, like pretty much every second week. Mm. There, I think they're having a concert tonight, actually, in Blow. Mm-hmm. What so I, I want to encourage is like live bands playing, because as far as I'm concerned, it, we went through a cultural phase in Norway where everybody was getting old fashioned and they wanted to get back to the roots of the agenda and they wanted to be in that cultural mode and now Mm -hmm. everything I mean I'm, I'm showing Midgard's block because of the dynamics in it and Mm -hmm. metal with Viking music and that and it's it's predominant background it it's amazing it's a it's something that I I would never have imagined or envisioned in the 21st well 21st century you know what I mean uh, it was brilliant and now we're never going to have that chance. We have to fight for it, you know. We have to sort of like say, we want this and we want to be able to have our own creative license. We want to be able to meet in a field and have our fun. So if they're saying open air, we'll do it. If we, if the cultural minister wants us to have X, Y, Z, Z amount of money, I feel as though we need to go fund you or we need to do something that supports it. You know what I mean? Instead mm-hmm. of like going, yeah, but we won't do this. You know what I mean? Um, and oh, I'm going to play that later. Sorry, a little bit of a technical fault. Um, but uh, going back to the story, I think that we're, we're, just, we're just in the scope of everything just dying down. And if we don't fight for it, there's going to be a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and there doesn't seem to be that much of a fight like you were saying earlier. Um, in some of our recordings together, mm-hmm. that there doesn't seem to be that much fighting. There doesn't seem to be much striving going on um, in terms of personal identity. Uh, and you know what I mean? Taking that intrinsic level of what it's all about. So I've just got like, this article up about intrinsic uh, stuff, all right, and what it means to be intrinsic, all right. So, and uh, even continuing this story about Operation Red, um, intrinsic, it's innate, inherent, inseparable from the thing itself essential. And I feel as though music is essential. uh, And I feel as though theater is essential to a person's thing. That's why we have cultural houses, especially here in in Norway. Mm -hmm. And there is like a a complete distinction of how it motivates us, you know? So there are a couple of theories of motivation and intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and I thought I might bring this up as one of my arguments to say that if we don't fight for it we're not motivated in fighting for our you know 
innate senses to be in touch, mm -hmm. then we've got problems. You know, yeah. it, it means that in society, we're not going to be motivated to do anything. We're just going to be like robots. Drones. We're a cattle. Yeah. Do what we say because that's <laughs> the end of the questioning. Well, yeah, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's quite true. But um, I'm just going to go into this debate about Simon Cowell and what it did to the UK. We didn't see any live music for a period of time. We didn't see bands playing music. And during the time of my age or youth, there was live music on TV. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> Those were the days, right? Those were the days. <laughs> and I'm rocking on my Zimmer frame. Was it even true? It Did was, it even? <laughs> And I'm not even going to show video video stuff, but I'm going to say that um, the argument is that when we got to see Simon Cowell do these TV shows, which were, <clears throat> they were Britain's Got Talent, um, The X Factor, and then now we've got The Voice. Mm -hmm. And none of these things show somebody playing a guitar, someone playing a keyboard. Everybody has to go to YouTube to watch that stuff. Yeah. And more and more and more and more, we're getting distant from our creativity because we're having one person rule it all. And we're not being in touch with our senses. And we've had TV take us into a realm which is quite a dark period and maybe that is part of why we needed this virus just saying because i would like to stand in a muddy field and do mud wrestling and uh, mud slinging competitions i love that stuff i mean <laughs> i've done it <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> It's not a problem to me. If she says open air, I'm like, yeah, let's do it, man. Middle of field. Let's all do this mudslinging, do all these activities. Who cares? Um, but moving back to our topics of today, uh, that's a bit screwy. I'm going to have to move it. Um, 2020 meltdown. We're going to be talking about artists and Vag knitting versus slag more now. What the hell is that? <laughs> I laugh because it's so funny. Um, are you prepared for this, dude? Oh, well, I'm not so sure, but it's okay. Go for it. Okay, so I'm I've never played videos before, um, but I'm going to play a little snippet, 50 seconds of this woman. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, I'm just preparing everybody. It's called vaginal knitting. Okay. All right. The sound is not up for this. What the fuck? That's too late. I've laughed. What the fuck was that? Oh, whatever. All right. 
right? And then you're gonna bring this up against Slagmar? Or? Oh yeah, you know I'm gonna bring it up against Slagmar. <laughs> How? Because <laughs> How and why? That's some messed up crap. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, um, the reason why I wanted to bring up this sort of like knitting theory is because <sighs> let's just say that uh, art, if you could call it that, has been going down some dark path. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So, you, yeah, I get your point. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you see what I mean though? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, okay, I do, I do. Yeah, I mean, I I I, I don't really want to do anything with my um, my private parts because they're private. Yep. Um, I, do, I I do feel the relation of Operation Red. Apparently, she did this for twenty eight days. Can you imagine being on your jam rag and then all of a sudden <laughs> you've got like. <laughs> this piece of knitting that turns red all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, yeah. that's grim. Has <laughs> she ever heard of T T toxic so shock syndrome? I mean, yeah. Yeah. And so you you know this is going down some dark route. This was six years ago, right? Oh, okay. And so. You know, by the end of the day, it's too late now, right? But she re really literally went grim, okay? Yeah, she and looks pretty grim already. Yeah, but this is pretty grim. I mean, uh -huh. honestly, you can see patches of the stuff on that. And yeah. I, I mean, yeah, whatever tickles your fancy, love. But <laughs> <laughs> Anything that do, does come from the the fanny flaps, right, or yeah. the the cat flaps, or what else do you want to call it? Uh, the minge makes me cringe. Okay, it's not because right, I'm yeah. uh, an anti-feminist. It's because literally, fee. I'm 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 actually wanting to be sick just seeing the the stuff. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a disturbing quality about this. Th um. There there is. Um I I don't I don't know there's many names for the stuff that you do do see in society, right? Mm -hmm. Uh it it doesn't paint a good picture. And so what I'm saying is art took a very grim place. It went oh, the, the grim. <laughs> the grim. likes and dislikes ratio is quite interesting. Look at that. Uh, absolutely right. <laughs> like 17,000 dislikes for this video. Yeah. yeah. You, you know. While only 6,000. Yeah. 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 Well, obviously, six thousand perverts out there, because I, like I said, <laughs> you know, I'm not really for this whole uh, <clears throat> supporting the uh, the private parts of a person because it's private parts, right? Yeah, I'm just saying it's private, right? And uh, I just want to talk about uh, toxic mat masculinity with you because i feel as though this is where we're at um mm -hmm. in terms of today's topics and the music industry uh what do you know about toxic masculinity before i go into it not much oh did you no. know such a thing exists um no i'd just say i wouldn't do it no no well, yeah, no, let's let's just go from you know ground zero a little bit. So. Ground zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's based on the basics, the below the belt region. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on a serious note, right? Um, apparently, this is medical news today. 
and they okay. say what to know about toxic masculinity toxic mm -hmm. masculinity is a term often used to describe the negative aspects of exaggerated masculine traits the term has evolved over time and has a place both in academia and everyday speech huh <laughs> No, man, this was actually written, right, yeah. by somebody in 2020. So we're talking virus times here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's now a pandemic for men, <laughs> okay? This is not a joke, right? <laughs> yeah. Because even though I might say, you know, vaginal knitting, and I'm going to talk about slag more in a more moment, um and what it means uh i'm gonna talk about toxic masculinity and why i think it's a load of bs okay okay go ahead okay you you can argue otherwise if you want right well yeah it depends on your argument all right so frequent use of the phrase may result in some people misinterpreting what toxic masculinity is which could lead to further misunderstanding and irritation the concepts underlining traditional masculinity are complex some people might find it difficult to challenge archaic thinking and to move past these negative aspects of traditional and outdated male values and it can take time to do so is essential for first to understand what toxic masculinity is and why it exists to be honest with you right i don't care right <laughs> I, I really don't care even if they want to put it in the journal of psychology because <laughs> i feel anything that's negative about men or women in general say f you harder <laughs> whatever you want to call it but apparently this harmful concept of masculinity also places significant importance on manliness based on strength lack of emotion self-sufficiency dominance and sexual virility take a deep breath mm. because i don't think that a man is a man if you take those strengths away from him you know um and then you mansplain no everyone can mansplain a woman can mansplain and be condescending as heck, you know, but on the notion of this equality thing, especially in music or displaying what traits make us real men and whatnot, apparently these overemphasis of these traits may lead to harmful imbalances in someone trying to live up to these expectations. Some examples include aggression, sexual aggression or control, showing no emotion or expression, sus suppressing That's emotions, <clears throat> hyper-competitiveness, needing to dominate or control others, a tendency towards or glorification of violence, isolation, low empathy, entitlement, and chauvinism and sexism. Mm -hmm. uh, that's toxic ma masculinity. So what the hell's femini uh, feminism, right? If it isn't chauvinism and sexism, especially when you have someone trying to knit from their feed the GG, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, I don't know what else to say apart from it's sick, right? 
you, 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 <laughs> and yeah. and so going back to how we used to not give a damn okay about this whole uh art being a form of expression for both the sexes um and imposing a sort of uh an equality basis. I'm going to show you an article that will also refer back to Slagmore. All right? It says, Blair Black Metal Kunstner. Jeg ser often ting jeg har lagt på t-shirtene til folk. And this is Janne Weiss Hansen. And she is the one that makes the t-shirts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, design it, yeah. But, but she doesn't design it from a vajiji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, most you. people don't. Jana Kier, um, uh, I will say that. Um, most people don't. Most yeah. people have that Fortunately, yeah. expression. Yeah, exactly. And you know what I'm really, really glad about? Yep. That during the 1990s, because this article is based on how she did Enslaves T-shirt, Immortal, and Burism. I don't know mm -hmm. whether or not you knew that she was an artist that did these things. Mm -hmm. um, and she shows real talent, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to respect her artwork a little bit more, you know. So I'm going to make this the central focus. Yeah, go on. The conversation. So basically, even her logos and everything else, like, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she did that for Satyricon. Oh, yeah. I have the CD. Yeah. I want to buy the um, actual LP. Mm -hmm. In the LP, it gives you a description of her, her work as well. And you can see the detail in her, her construction of it, which I'm very impressed about. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. It's very difficult for me to like get the page to do what I want it to. Yeah, I see um, that. So, She's got this grim one there that um, it's great. And we were talking about our album covers, weren't we? Mm -hmm. The other day. And oh, yeah. yeah. Really mm -hmm. important. Well, I'm going back to this point, you know, that mm -hmm. um, our creativity and the age post virus, we need to go back to this, okay? <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Even even her logos are a pretty damn dippity amazing. That's enslaved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old logo. Yeah, and that's her. So, mm -hmm. and what makes me proud is um, just to talk about this. Because um, from your perspective, what do you think about women uh, in black metal? What do you think about them? Well, as far as I know, it's uh, uh, you know mostly it's it's these graphic designers and uh, uh, maybe uh, write lyrics for some bands. I, I that that's what I know. But but when it comes to fronting, like like actually performing the music, there's not so many women. That's true. Like you know, like we, we of course we have Trisha on drums and Urar. And uh, that's that's a uh, like I, I can't even mention uh, like five female drummers in black metal. I think she's an amazing drummer as well. Yeah, so she's really good. She's really she, good. She um she takes it to another level as well. Mm -hmm. Like really, really with the bass and the mm -hmm. tops. Um, yeah, but not not so many musicians. I mean, like. I think the most well-known band is uh, Dark and Nocturne Slaughter Cult. I think mm -hmm. they're German, but I'm not so sure. Yeah, they they have a 
a girl who's singing and playing the guitar at the same time. There, there is a German band that has a, a, a drummer, and I can't remember the name of them as well. And they get dressed up in the most mundane outfits. So mm -hmm. you can't tell that she is a female drumming because of her outfits. But uh -huh. she's going for it ten hell for leather, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I want to say about feminism is it's taken a dark route because there was no decorum in that video. And artists like Beats, right, like, you know, Wise Hansen, um, <clears throat> she, she does go to a lovely level of showing her technique even in her tattoos. Um, <clears throat> and uh, she also shows values and principles that we probably even didn't even realize were evolving in the music. You know, mm -hmm. if you're gonna do something art, oh, it's not selfish, you know? Yep. It's not about, are oh, you woman bits and just your woman bits. It's to do with supporting that industry and you don't talk about your sex or you don't talk about anything else like that it's to do with who you are what you're all about mm -hmm. <clears throat> don't know whether or not you noticed that yeah but um going back to uh body painting <clears throat> sorry about that oh, but um i just wanted to show that it's not just Ooh. It's not just uh, women that body paint or get body painted, it's men too. Uh -huh. And uh, whoa, that's a bit much. But um, <laughs> I just wanted to show that even a man does these uh, body paintings and things like that. And it's not feminist. It's it's got nothing to do with, you know, you're just selfish and your own bits. I, I don't think that's anything to do with whatever. That's the toxicity of it all. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you should call it toxic masculinity. I don't think that it should be given just a male name. I feel, I feel as though feminism on the whole has gone freakily sideways you know what i mean just saying yeah I but mean, these people are fucking aliens man look at them <laughs> <laughs> i just i just wanted to just like show that there is a possibility that we're going down some dark seeded route and we don't need to go there, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. uh, of separating the sex. And if we do that in music, then there's po no point. And we've, we've been slowly going down that slippery slope. So anyway, I was just gonna show you also, you know, the uh, feminism and subversion thing because me and you talked about subversion ages ago remember that communist subversion yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this has actually you know been a topic of discussion within theater but never in music you know what i mean so subversion violence gender disruption feminist engagements with euripides the and in this article, it actually shows that there's like violence within uh, the women and uh, there can be that aggressive side that's played. And uh, even to be misogynistic is a part of a Greek dilemma and a tragedy. Just saying, because I'm building up to the next right. bit. Okay. Okay. 
because I wanted to know how you feel about the witch burning. The witch burnings. Yeah. It was um, it was the highlight uh, of show business back in the days, I suppose. Witch burning and worshiping. Yeah. Uh, it's really ridiculous, um, I think, when it comes to the Inquisition and all that, um, all that stuff. But I think it's also an interesting question to ponder. Uh, can we judge our past based on uh, the things we know in the present? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think it's difficult to put our mindset back into medieval times. Mm -hmm. But a friend of mine once uh, once said that you know back in the days like you know as as horrible as it looks to the Inquisition for us and all that stuff mm -hmm. like the common mentality was even worse. So what he suggested for me was that like let's say someone does some um, uh, bestiality, so like I don't know, like there is a farmer or something fucks its own pig or something. Uh, of course, the Inquisition will go after this person. But had it not, then the people would be so upset that they would just, you know, like get their uh, uh, sights and uh, whatever they have and then just uh, shred this guy to pieces. Mm. So that's, uh, that's it. And uh, so like the Inquisition, I think, was, was a result of like there, there might have been an actual demand in it, but I'm not saying it's a uh, hundred percent true. I'm just theorizing mm. because um, it's literally impossible for us to know what people were thinking back in the days, right? I mean, there has been documents saying that uh, perhaps they thought that witches were quite bad, you know, because they were. Um, incredibly sexist towards the whole uh, movement of paganism and mm -hmm. things like that yeah. um so you know paganism in itself wasn't actually as brutal as everybody makes out to be it's only the war part that was brutal yeah. but actually in societies themselves the, the people who were most brutal were the ones who used a belief system and then indoctrinated the people to go mm -hmm. on a witch hunt. Yeah. I mean, that's basically where the witch hunt part comes from. Mm -hmm. And so these, if you went back into the times of a, about 400 years ago, 300 years ago, and feminists they would be witch hunted i'm just saying and i'm just, yeah. gonna just like bring this up so i can like bring up slack more because <laughs> i feel as though it's it's a nice topic uh <clears throat> discussion and uh it also highlights you know what 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 happened back in the day um uh -huh. And, you know, we're talking about some proper destruction. We're talking about people wearing masks that were like, you know, the plague was here. Yeah, and it's still in. Yeah. All of a sudden we have the plague and we have all of these things that are, you know, slowly yeah. ebbing us away all of a sudden. And these feminists... Are they witches? Are they going to be hunted? I'm just saying. <laughs> no, it's, now it's the feminists who hunt. It's now the feminists who hunt. <laughs> and then it's your toxic masculinity that is challenged. <laughs> and then you are definitely in trouble. Um, but um, yeah. I mean, the only reason why I'm pointing out that uh, Slagmore exists is that uh, the creativity and the boldness of this and the time 
of the plague, um, especially, is a, a highlight because we are going through our modern day plague right now. And we're being told that men are a problem. Um, and 400 years ago, you know, if a woman spoke out um, and did anything evil or whatever, or tried to get her own back, red letter day or something, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they were burned at the stake. Yep. So <laughs> you, you see where I'm going with this, right? I guess I so, to, yeah. I had, to, I had to turn this down, round to slag more because I know that it was an epic time at Inferno Festival and <laughs> this witch burning, and I'm showing everybody now, um, but it also represents how we've evolved um, and now the tables have turned and it's actually men that are going to be hunted and uh, burnt at the burnt to the cross you know mm -hmm. uh upside down <laughs> but <laughs> but no i just feel as though in the metal industry really you're meant to have a little bit of decorum as a woman mm -hmm. um you're not meant to show your uh sexual side so much i don't think in black metal in other parts of metal yeah, man, you do the mud wrestling. You show you, you do wet t-shirt competition and you do all those kind of things. But in black metal in general, there's a respect for men. I don't know whether or not you've noticed that. No, I was just saying that I didn't notice too much of a um, difference in um, like uh, gender roles or whatever in mm -hmm. in black metal. It's uh, I think as with most metal genres, uh, there are less women, of course, mm -hmm. but that's it. Like okay, going back to. Fear Factory again, remember uh, in 2017 when they played, was it 17, maybe 16? I think maybe it was 16 actually, but it doesn't matter. Like, like even Burton said like, oh, wow, we haven't seen so many women in our crowds lately. There were like, what, like three, four women at the concert, you know, mm -hmm. including you. And then he like makes this remark, what the hell? So, um, so I don't know, but respect for men, that's what you were saying. Yeah. Um, it is a male dominated industry so i won't really like it's a male dominated industry but why is that like it's uh i don't know like i i really don't um i don't like to touch upon the points i just think that we've gone down some dark path pre-virus right because that video was six years ago that vag knitting okay uh, and Personally, I feel as though it's it's really important to, you to know, do a watch. yeah. <laughs> you know, if you want to do that in your spare time during this virus period of lockdown, yeah, go right ahead. Go for it. Yeah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're on your jam rags. I mean, uh, that puts that <laughs> that term really into context. Um. <clears throat> But no, I, I just want to express that uh, witch, in, uh, witch hunting and witch burning has turned the other way. Yep. And um, I like the industry the way that it is. I don't really want to change it. I feel as though we've got idols and we love them, we respect them. We feel as though, you know, that the talent is, is something to behold because... In this day and age, like I said, we've got the Simon Cowles. But what I don't understand is why isn't the fair? Why is it that the feminists aren't attacking Simon Cowell and you know these great big um, uh, media companies that stick to this format of? You know, we're just going to give you the same rehashed thing like The Voice and X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and 
Hungary's got talent and no. France has got talent and all of these kind of things. Why are we not attacking the industry? Because obviously people have got talent as talent. And uh, this is where the witch hunt has began. Um, and you said uh, before you thought that the industry was dying. This is one of my arguments for it dying, dude. Mm -hmm. um, toxic masculinity is now a medical term. And I feel as though that is so pungent. It's, it's horrible. It's like watching something rotting from the outside in. And it's horrible. Mm -hmm. Just what, you know, watching this flame burning episode now. I mean, you know, it's epic. And we really have to stand up against this. Um, but no, I, I mean, as though the, the value of our, our uh, quality of life has changed. We've had austerity, like we've been talking about. And now we're being attacked for being just ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we are on a witch hunt. Yeah, I guess. And that's where the slagmore part comes in. Which side are you on, man? <laughs> 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 I mean, the, the, the fact that you could have an audience that watches this yeah. was intense, man. It was just the best. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't want anything to change. Uh, I didn't want it to change. I thought that it was incredible just being there. I thought that the whole atmosphere was loving. There was nothing bad. But now all of a sudden, Operation Red. And we're going to be talking about cat flaps and uh, slippery slides. And we won't be able to say the word moist. <laughs> Which um, strange. is strange now history. changed. <laughs> but um, yeah, on a serious note, yeah. Um, I feel as though, you know, talking about how this is an, a passionate endeavor and that... Uh, now we're, we're, we're in the era of the witch hunt. The virus has taken over. Mm. And maybe we've become a load of zombies. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we have been zombies already. Yeah? You think yeah, so? Yeah, well, aren't we? Yeah. I but feel that. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's sort of cliche to say, but... But I mean, at the end of the day, it's um, we're just uh, consumer zombies. I feel as though the class distinction thing is very important for us. Yeah. You know, to actually say, you know, hold on a minute, I can afford to get this, and I can do this, and I can participate in society a little bit more. It's really intrinsic for us, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I've got value, I've got status, you know? And then all of a sudden they want to take away our values and our status and, you know, replace us with this drone thought. Mm -hmm. Here's a thought. We're going to talk about the Helvetta documentary review now. Ooh, I haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it? No, I haven't. <laughs> I have been so like, I don't know, like uh, there's so many things to do lately. I, I haven't had the time to watch it. It's ridiculous. Well, well you know what? Yeah. Just because it's you and yep. because I believe that you need to like see this or like high voltage, old fashioned type uh, clip. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna show it, but yeah. without the sound. I hope. I don't want like get copyright. It's a bit weird that they're still making documentaries about this thing. It's uh, like early '90s 
black metal stuff is still something to be documented. Yeah. Like, uh, there have been several documentaries about this. Oh, I mean, there's your friend. Yeah, exactly, Billy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's awesome, man. Yeah, um, he's very cool. Uh, yeah, but I, I just wanted to make notes uh, about the actual uh, documentary because I have seen some of it, right? And uh, although uh, there's a lot of them talking about how they were influenced and who influenced them mm -hmm. and the parts of society and how, where they came from and what made them do the things that they did. So I just feel, feel as though it's really important to highlight that out, that they did have, you know, this sort of like background and everybody was talking about it. And uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a bad thing. But I mean, just talking about values and principles earlier what are your thoughts about values and principles in the music industry like for black metal well let's see it's difficult to say because uh, I, I think and then in the beginning they they had a certain set of values and principles mm -hmm. um, that are in 2020 uh, completely ignored mm -hmm. so um, i don't know i feel like like these bands uh, well like i said i haven't seen this uh, documentary series yet but i'm pretty sure it deals with mayhem and uh, dark zone and uh, satiricon and stuff like that and most of these bands sold out or maybe i don't know sold out. I, I mean that um, like there was a certain rebellious aspect in uh, in the beginning, but like it's it's not just with black metal, but like I think with most hard rock and uh, and metal uh, bands, there there is a certain uh, sense of rebellion. Mm. And as the years went on and these bands became successful, they've be like uh, sided with the oppressors pretty much. Mm. So, like, let's say, like, you know, if you go to a Satyricon concert now, like, do you feel any, I don't know, like anything extreme, anything, um, I, I don't know how to put it, but like what you see is like, you know, a few musicians performing and then um, Sigurd driving off in his Porsche or something after the concert, so, like, and that's it, Emperor, like, uh, he's on, bloke, like, though? what, what? A Sigurd? It's uh, you know, it's 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 nothing more than uh, like an empty performance without any any true meaning or uh, like standing for anything. I think. Yeah, but of um, course he he has I like you know like they they have some ideas in music. Of course, mm -hmm. they probably have a message they want to transmit to their crowd. Mm -hmm. but it's not very powerful. I mean. I just think that 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 is um, a value and principle operation in that, and uh, I I just want to explain from a, a Norwegian perspective because um, we don't have a Norwegian perspective when we talk about black metal, but oh, yeah. for them it is about their history and the and the the specifics that we were talking about the artist who who made the uh album covers and everything else like that mm -hmm. and uh specifically when you look at album covers and satiricon you're looking at edward monk yeah so you know that you know it's edward monk uh, yeah. when you're when you're discussing stuff so um the relationship for them is based on artwork so this one was from 2013 and it was the new beginning 
um, album or artwork and they choose um, Edward Munch specifically. So uh, the, the, the context of what I'm trying to say about the values of black metal is during a period of time for Norway, the most predominant period of time for their art and their culture was when they freed themselves from the Swedish and the Danish. <laughs> <laughs> and for yeah. me, that's quite prominent as well, because, you know, you're talking about people like good old Ibsen. Mm -hmm. You know about Ibsen, don't you? Yeah, of course. And so um, the best way to talk about, you know, uh, the romantic period uh, because the Romantic period is known uh, basically for uh, English writers, mm -hmm. and that's not true. Uh, you know, you've got William Blake, you've got John Keats, William Wordsworth, all of those people. Mm -hmm. um, even Char Charlotte Bronte, Jane Austen, those writers were dominant in that period of time but nothing like Ibsen. Ibsen, Ibsen actually had the fruitfulness of uh, some that you can't describe um, but I will say that the definition all right of a romantic period listen to this right get ready for this this is gonna yes. this is gonna chisel your nizzle as they say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Romanticism definition. Romanticism was a literal, literary movement that emphasized individualism and emotion. The Romantic era lasted from the end of the 18th century to the middle of the 19th century, but its effects are still evident throughout modern literature. Romantic works were a reaction of the age of enlightenment and the advancing industrial age, a time in which science and rationalization began to take firm hold in the public consciousness. Romantic literature challenged this new wave of ideas of telling stories rooted in emotion nature, idealism, and the subjective experiences of common men and women. Yes, which mm -hmm. goes back to that point about feminism, right? It doesn't really exist in a, in a whole um, cultural aspect. You know, it's men and women in a common goal. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically going back to uh, this period of romanticism uh, and whether or not it was really important, um, so was death, you know? Um, and they really, because they, they really got into the, the deeps of it. And this is Hedda, Hedda Gabler, by the way. I just thought I might show it in the background because it's really important. Let me do that properly. Um, Hedda, Hedda Gabler, do you know about it? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's a, an Ibsen piece. It's about oh, okay. people that um, were, were going through hard times. And um, basically, uh, this is a theater production of it. And the actor, thought that she was going through a, a dark phase you know uh just playing it in the background there and basically it's about a man and a woman they go through hardships and then it leads to a result of bad times you know <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think the end outcome would be? 
just yeah <laughs> and basically it's it's known as the suicide plague uh -huh. okay yep. uh, and a, a lot of people don't like to talk about suicide we've talked talked about it before on the tiktok thing yeah but i'm not saying that Suicide is a cultural thing for Norway. I'm not saying. Well, that. well, well. I Maybe mean, you might be able to say that actually. You, you can, you can say that because we're I all living so. in the dark. Yeah, I think it's quite popular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't looked into the uh, the statistics of this, but um. I think the suicide ratio is pretty high in Norway. Mm. And then maybe in Scandinavia in general. Mm. But uh, it, it would be interesting to, to look into this a bit further. You know, and the, the fact of the matter is, we were talking about Helvetta, right? And you know that subject about Pele comes up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. He killed himself, too, yeah. It, like you said, it is one of those things that is probably in the culture and it's a characteristic that they're okay with talking about there i mean many countries would just frown upon it and then say no you're going straight to hell if you commit suicide and they don't really discuss the problems about it why it occurred what what was going on mm -hmm. and uh, what led to the result of that yeah. um and the thing about uh black metal is freezing moon come on mate <laughs> you you know he took us there but we all look overcame that thing um and maybe he did that to save us maybe these things are done to save us you know i'm just saying um i have thought about it and i have thought about the principles of why they do the things that they do because the helvetta series it talks about pele and where he went to in his period of darkness and what could have resulted or to his death or what led to his death i do have some questions about oystein though because apparently he probably did push him over the edge mm -hmm. so there is that element of darkness of whether or not you saw the weakness of a person and you wanted to challenge it instead of saying Yo, dude, get some help. You know. Yeah. And the beauty of the of the actual um, uh, TV series is that it touches upon this point that you do need to talk to someone if you have those problems or feelings. You know. So um the most amazing thing about uh ibsen is that he could talk about anything that was happening at the period of the time instead of being uh what do they call it when you bury your head in the sand yeah bury your head in ostrich ostrich uh, strategy of politics yeah I mean, it's not just based on politics, it's to do with your culture as well and whether or not you you recognize that such things exist. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, do you realize that we've become the post-virus post syndrome and we've got post-virus syndrome? Do you recognize that or... <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, it does yeah, sound I fruit loop, but I thought about it and I thought about how we might actually be 
uh, entering a new romantic period. It might be like a post-industrial revolution. It might be there, you know. Just saying. Well, I don't know. It's hard. Individualism and emotion. There's yeah. no emotion. Yeah. How do you feel about that, though? I don't think uh, romanticism is coming to black metal in the sense that, okay, like, they always uh, brag about individual thinking and, you know, like, that's the origin of Satanism and all that stuff. But at the same time, I think it's uh, a bit dishonest with themselves and, like, like the emotional part is not being dealt with. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I think, Swedish Shining deals with some of that, but that's it. Like, it's always some generic, um, like, evil uh, things, you know, like, whatever that sounds cool. And then at the end of the day, there's uh, nothing about the human being. So you're thinking that it's quite piranical, you know? It's quite no. pure and, you know, won't talk about those kind of things. It's not rea realistic. Well, yeah, yeah, it's not realistic. That's, like, you know... Mm. Uh, it's it's really interesting because like right now if you ask me um, there are all these you know black and death uh, death metal bands like dealing with um, like Satanism like mm -hmm. uh, demons or serial killers and all that stuff now I just laugh you know because it's it's all fiction it's uh, it's stories to scare kids or something like like you like horror but you don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. What's serious is is actual like you know reflective things. Mm. It's difficult to to actually um, uh, phrase uh, all right, but but I think if you go to Devin Townsend, that's very interesting, because he he was you know like he was playing heavy music with strapping on land, and then like he turned uh, to this very um, like that's that's romantic like uh, what he does like this um, really mellow kind of thing but that's there are some true honest emotions going on there and i think that's well it takes some balls to to get to that point mm. and all these uh black metal people they are pretty pretty far from that i would say that watain are i'm going to defend watain but watain are also swedish band they are discussed in Hel Helvete documentary uh -huh. and obviously they're they're quite predominant they're always going to the extreme and then passing that dark dark path but they yeah, yeah, yeah but then again i think it's just the result of good marketing i i do like, have to agree with you there i mean i mark uh, like vatayan i think it's uh it's about 70 percent visuals and uh you know like um, yeah marketing and like 30 percent music maybe I, and i say it uh even though I, I really like the music too but um like it's it's a very very well um, structured thing and i think it was what i in that brought um like this new um well, not new wave of black metal, but but it brought this new type of uh, performance to to life. I mean, after Vatain did these really bloody and you know gory shows and lots of fire and, and all that stuff, and then Mayhem started doing something similar, and then Behemoth started doing something similar, mm. and uh, now it's it's a thing. But you know, in two thousand and sixteen, right? Yeah. That was the first time I'd seen Mayhem with all the bands from pre 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 previous uh, band members. Yeah, at the Inferno, right? Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to tell you that that performance, it was divine. Yeah, you know it was why? Awesome. Yeah, tell me. No, no, it wasn't just 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 because of the pig's head, right? <laughs> and the Pele imagination and you know what Attila can actually do. 
it was to do with the fact that on stage they it was like a performance of shakespeare <laughs> right? Very interesting. it okay. was and and now i'm reflecting back and i'm thinking those are the things that i'm really interested in i'm really interested in freaking shakespeare and hamlet or thurlo um midsummer night's dream you name it i'm interested in it and they did that performance and i was like yes they am they like mixed both theater with black metal and it was just like dude and the drumming was intense either they got the former drummer to come back and it was like my heart just went you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I felt it just rise up into my throat just as I was watching it. And I was just watching it from the top. And you know when I was telling you about how there's a class distinction in even the theatre. So if you buy your tickets down at the bottom, yeah? and you stand, stand at the bottom, the standing, you haven't really got that much money. It's a thing, even with tickets. Mm -hmm. And then if you're in the seating area, you've got a lot of money. So I'm overlooking them anyway, in the corner, and I'm thinking, I've got the, sh the best place in the whole world and i'm watching this <laughs> <laughs> so you know you know um yeah i i would say that i'm quite um i'm quite lucky and fortunate to have had that uh, that situation happen to me i i loved it beginning middle and end and it felt like i was watching an actual theater production but with the best band ever <laughs> <laughs> moving swiftly along i just wanted to discuss with you avatar hunter gavarin what are your thoughts on this mate what is this it's like an album that they're gonna do all right and uh i'm not really gonna i'm not really gonna knock avatar because you know, what the band bands. Avatar? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. mainstream bands, they do the best that they can, okay, when they can. And apparently, Avatar release Hunter Gather documentary Scaling the Mountain. Okay. So, Swedish metalist Avatar detailed the making of their Hunter. Hold on a minute, my internet connection went. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Yeah, right. So Avatar released their Hunter Gatherer documentary, Scaling the Mountain. All right, Swedish metalers Avatar detail the making of their Hunter Gathering album and then new documentary, Scaling the Mountain. All right, moving swiftly. All right, have you heard about it? I never, uh, I never listened to this band. I think maybe a song or two, but that's it. I don't remember too much, so no, I wasn't following. I mean, you know how you listen to Ghost and you think, yeah, that's a bit, that's Ghost. <laughs> well, okay, I never do, but. Uh... But they're harder than Ghost. Uh huh. That they've got a little bit of clout, but. The one thing that I love about this is because they're going back to basics with their videos. So mm -hmm. um, the, the thing about their videos is that they used to focus on apocalyptic stuff, right? And uh, now they're going back to the monkey see, monkey do, grow your hair learn to tune a guitar bang your head is what they talk about in this mm -hmm. sort of like documentary but the term apocalyptic right you got to actually believe in something and it says um 
of relating to or resembling an apocalypse. Maybe we are in an apocalypse. All right. A foreboding imminent disaster or final doom. Okay. Wildly unrestrained. Ultimately decisive. That is the definition of apocalyptic. And that's what I would call this band. It's kind of apocalyptic. Right. So I'm going to show you, right, a clip of their video. Yeah. Without getting a little bit of a suspension there. So they're obviously into this sort of like, yeah. Anime. Uh, like the crow. Yeah. Now you're with me sort of thing um and i like i like where they've gone to uh in in terms of their artistic approach with this hunter gatherer album oh yeah the visual oh yeah i hear, i think I, I did see this yeah yeah I, uh, it rings a bell so how did you feel about it not the visual very good but like like I said, I can't remember the music for the life of me. I don't know. It is. It's just like a cross between Ghost and something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's probably the, probably that's the reason. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 you know, I've never gotten into Ghost either, so it's uh, well, whatever. You know, it's just probably not where I live. Yeah, it's like we like to go darker, but this this band uh, helps you to go darker yeah but um the the video i've got to admit is quite funny right yeah i yeah, know the, the visuals are good oh, the, this is a good one their their new video right it's got a monkey mm -hmm. in it this is this monkey right <laughs> and the only reason why i say this they went there with this sort of like going back to basics talking about how maybe um, they need to be like referring to things in a connotational state, yeah? So that mm -hmm. nobody actually says the thing that they're meant to say, right? <laughs> of what monkey see and monkey do is really all about. <laughs> So they're making you think, and that's what we're back to. We're back to bands actually thinking about their music, the the way in which they're interpreting it. I thought Hunter Gatherer is going to be about, you know, them talking about how they were going to gather things and <laughs> tribal. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But no, it's. It, it's like a rejuvenation mm -hmm. because all of us need this during this virus period of time Sweden were the only place to not have a lockdown yeah so to them they didn't have the opportunity to even have a break from each other really and uh, come back and be artistic with it so it's mm -hmm. very interesting to know that they've made this video saying that they could be hunter gatherers yeah. <laughs> and they really haven't had lockdown <laughs> <laughs> the irony man yeah um, so they've actually like gone to a cabin done all their music you know what i mean um yeah. and gone back to basics shown that they have the ability to do it uh, without their makeup which is great you know mm -hmm. uh, and you get to the real feel of the fact that they've been stuck in a forest together in the mm -hmm. wilderness you know what I mean yeah. but come out with some real creative talent Maybe that's what we all needed. We needed to recharge our batteries. You know, look at that landscape as well. Wow. Yeah, I'm for it. Just need the, um, 
the northern lights <laughs> um but no just using this as a, a prophecy of what's just about to come for the music industry right and the realms in which we need to take it is really important you know i'm not saying that uh sweden has been devalued because quite a lot of people would say that but the term that we used before which is the toxic masculinity part um i feel as though it's important to watch this documentary and realize that it's a band of men a band right mm -hmm. <laughs> So feminists are really not going to like it, right? No. <laughs> um, but it's really important for men to get back to basics, swim around in a lake in the freezing <laughs> cold, come back, make some goddamn good music. Um, and I feel as though that's the really important part because your creativity is never going to happen. And uh, it, it, it's a very interesting documentary. I liked it, I have to say. And mm -hmm. um, if people want to know how to form a band and get together on what you need to do and the principles that you need to have, I feel that they've really touched upon some really good points here of listening and co codependency, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's really good, positive, positive things, you know. Um, so I'm not, I'm not for the bashing of, of men at all. So for it to be a medical term, um, I, I cry. So and this video kind of helped me realize that even Helvetta, like you are saying to me earlier, um, uh, is predominantly based on a negative point of time in music. Uh, no. The death of someone and that's how it was made. And we can't talk about the gruesomeness of it. Um, we can't talk about the positive bits of men being together to make music or produce music. It's like, finally, man. Avatar are on the way forward. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know about Sweden, though, don't you? Well, of course. Yeah. So uh, in Sweden, they are uh, quite into this sort of like feminist realm and telling men that they're worth a species of poop poop. Mm -hmm. And they're only going to think about sex. Uh, and these men, they don't do that. Mm, they show that they can come together, make some good music, and genuinely focus on their goals together yeah. as a band. Man, that's all positive, man. That's yeah, very positive, so... I'm all for it. I don't care. I mean, <laughs> you have to make no excuses on this one. Absolutely not. You know, yeah. um, I'm trying to say it on a, a positive note because we have actually touched on some real deep topics today. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, the last final point that I like to make is yeah. that it would be good to have a radio station because we can't play music on YouTube. Um, can no, because uh, every time you do, you get like uh, a, uh, so many copyrights and then you get banned. Mm -hmm. So you're only allowed a certain amount. That's why I yeah. wanted a radio station. All right. So Operation Red, I feel as though it's important to like talk about how we actually do need music we need to be positive about it we need to be positive about men and women totally equal 
we're going to bring bring equality into society we got to start you know not being abusive towards each other you know what i mean mm-hmm. and uh this is this is all positive stuff that's happening the change yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah I, th- i think it's a nice uh thought for a conclusion yeah absolutely yeah. um but yeah if we could just uh get a radio station together uh mm-hmm. focus on that try and try and help combat operation red from affecting the black zone <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be really great you know um i don't know in terms of plans i would uh, i would put it forward to the people that i like and you put it forward to the people that you like too mm-hmm. and see what that they can come out with um, yeah yeah and bring this forward because i feel as though every every single part of this has been attacked you know we've been attacked by all types of ideologies that shouldn't exist in society but they do do and we all need music like i'm saying and if we could scale it then 1 to 10 of how much we need something or it would be up there on the top 10 definitely mm-hmm. for a normal average person it wouldn't be just social media it would be music as well yeah but yeah what are your thoughts on that well uh on the radio or um radio yeah well i don't know it's it sounds like it's uh, pretty difficult yeah like um i think for for the time being like this this format that we uh, that you are doing is pretty good yeah and uh the question is like can it be developed into radio but it uh, it requires a lot of like much more work than this unfortunately i think so so i don't know but if you can you know if you can manage then go for it mm. and then yeah i mean yeah you've, you've you've made me think about it you've made me think about how maybe i uh i do it would take a lot of force but i don't think it should be in my name i think that's totally selfish no why not no 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 come on take credit for it no no no, no. No 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 no. All right, well, we'll figure it out. We'll we'll, we'll do 50/50 if you want. <laughs> But you're either way, the, you're doing the leg work, but uh yeah, but we'll yeah, that's the future. It's the future. Yeah, we have yeah. to think about the future right now, especially after that hunter gather thing. Yeah, that yeah. was quite positive, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially after talking about vaginal knitting. Come on, mate. Pushing it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks to our listeners. If you really like what we've been discussing, please subscribe. Press like to all our stuff, especially Or if you have any thoughts, then please share it in the comments. Yeah, we're getting into this flow of things. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then also share it with your friends um also visit mpm tv and uh you'll see martin stuff apparently you were talking about the weather the other day is that right <laughs> um you know the context for this by the way absolute no it's uh you know david lynch yeah. uh is is doing this on youtube now he the uh, every day he uploads a weather forecast and like he he actually gets to like he has a jar with 10 balls in it with each ball has a number and then he pulls out one and then he's like okay today's number is 9 or something so that's <laughs> that's it's really ridiculous i thought like you know like i do a spin off of my version on this whole weather report and it's you know it's it's really quite funny because you can't see any weather at all he's just like sitting in his basement or something he looks out the window and is like Yeah, early morning fog and later it will be blue skies and golden sunshine all along the way. <laughs> like, you know, like you have no way of verifying, you can't tell 
shit and then it, it's well, all in his mind right you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah pretty much so you know david lynch right he's got yeah, of course, meditation is, stuff yeah, yeah 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 he's amazing and i really like this show as well so i, I have yeah, to just I just check it david out lynch. yeah yeah just go for david lynch weather report and then you'll find it absolutely so share martin yeah. stuff and martin version of david lynch <laughs> And yeah, leave some uh, comments. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. But.